not so long ago All of us were children With stories to be told Brought into this world With its uncertainties Blessed with innocence We sought to find our peace Once upon a time Once upon a time Once upon a time This quiet little town Lay sleeping in its winter cloak Without a soul around Yet a child's story Was destined to unfold While the town Nestled in the cold Once upon a time Once upon a time Once upon a Banging on the workhouse door. In the middle of the man falls asleep after a hard day. And then his miserable wife. What's your name, lovey? Too ashamed to say, eh? Well, us nice folks at the workhouse here will give your little take a name. What's that you're clutching there? My, my, isn't that a pretty locket? Where's my baby's locket? It's all safe right here, lovey. If I should die, you must give the locket to my baby. So one day he'll know who he is. Promise me. Promise me. I promise, lovey. You can trust Mrs. Bumble. Oh, where is she, Bumble? I... 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 She... She... It's a boy, baby. How would you know? Harry Potter thinks he's an expert. <laughs> Running around in the cold night dressed like that? I'm not surprised your face is blue. But you ordered me to. You're the one. Shut up, Bumble. Getting me out of my warm bed and she dies anyway. That's the poor for you. No manners. What's his name? His mother wouldn't say. Hers or his. We name them alphabetically. And next on the list is... Oh, yes. So, so what say we call him... Oliver? 
may be wanting a last name, too, I suppose. Although why poor people need one, I'll never know. Seeing as how he twisted up our night, sir, uh, shall we call him Twist? Oh, Twist, so be it. Now he's all yours, <laughs> Bumble. Faster, faster, Oliver Twist. Twist? <laughs> yes, the name does fit the task. Work! 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 Oh, you are such lucky lads to get to work all day. So many children waste their time by going out to play. Work, 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 work. Busy hands are happy hands, as you can plainly see. A little sweat can never hurt. Just look what he did for me. <laughs> work, work. It's your good fortune to have a boss like me. Why, a penny a week and food to eat for menial tasks as these. Ha! You should be paying me! Work! 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 Working builds good character and makes you strong, you see? So don't forget as you grow old, you owe it all to me. Work! 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 Now work! Don't we feed you well enough here, boy? Three meals of gruel each day, an onion twice a week, and half a roll every Sunday? Uh, yes, sir. That's more than enough, sir. It is. Mm. Perhaps we should eliminate that roll, lest you become lethargic. Oh, that's very thoughtful of you, sir. Hello, Toad. Um, my name's Oliver Twist. What's yours? Oh, I don't know what that means in Toad language. But I think I'll call you... Squeaker, because you sound like a squeak. You're welcome. Would you like to be my friend? Good, Squeaker. But whenever people are near, I'll have to hide you. We don't get enough food around here. And if one of the older boys sees you, he might... He might want to eat you. Don't worry, Squeaker. I won't let any harm come to you. Bumble, we must have more food. Oh, well, tell him. Oh. Good old Oliver. But, 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 but I didn't, I... You volunteered. We saw you. What's this? What's this? Talking during meals, are you? Please, sir. I want some more. More? More! More! more. 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 with me, old 
Tony is governor. You ingrate. On the morrow, you go out into the world to earn a living. But, sir, I'm only nine years old. No wonder the poor are poor. Instead of working, all they think about is their tum-tums. <laughs> <laughs> Please, sir, what does that sign say? Can't you read, numbskull? Nobody ever taught me to read, sir. Excuses, excuses. It says, Undertaker. Good evening, Mr. Bumble, sir. Uh, good evening, Noah. Uh, Mr. Sowerberry is expecting us. Yes, sir. Please come in, sir. Clumsy. He didn't mean it, sir. Clumsy! Don't defend him, Noah. The boy is a clod. It grieves me that you have suffered the loss of a loved one. But in the large scheme of things... No, no, Sowerberry. It's me, uh, Bumble, uh, with your new apprentice, Oliver Twist. Hmm. Oh, yes, Bumble. <laughs> Noah, tell Mrs. Sowerberry to prepare supper. Yes, sir. A pleasure seeing you again, Mr. Bumble, sir. And, Oliver, I know we shall become fast friends. Uh, thank you, Noah. <laughs> All right, young Oliver. I'll feed you and clothe you and give you a good bed. And each and every week, I'll pay you the sum of one penny. Uh, 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 thank you, Mr. Sowerberry. Now then, Oliver, work hard, don't overeat, and remember... A penny is a lot of money for only seven days' work each week. I trust you're not frightened because I'm an undertaker, Oliver. N n n no, sir. An undertaker is not unlike a butcher or a baker. We just uh, wrap our merchandise in a different package. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> <coughs> uh, this is our new apprentice, Oliver Twist. Hello, Oliver, dear. I'm Mrs. Sowerberry. And this is our scullery maid, Charlotte. <laughs> and you've met Noah, I believe. Give the lad a good meal. Oh, we'll feed him proper, we will. All that for me, Mum? I said we'd feed you proper, and we will. <laughs> There's your bed. You don't mind sleeping among the coffins, I suppose. No, Mum. There, there, there's nothing to be be afraid of, Squeaker. It happened the 
happens every time night falls. You see things moving across the walls. The wind puts on its moonlit show. They're only shadows. Well, I've got you and you've got me. So who cares who's there? Long as we're together. Demons in the night sure do make a frightful sight, but I'm not scared because I know the only shadows. Well, I've got you and you've got me, so who cares who's there? Long as we're together. Shadows. Mr. Sourberry? No, Noah. Oliver has a sweeter face. Oliver, at the graveside, I want you to weep a bit. Mourners appreciate a good weeping from a stranger. And when they discover you are in my employ, they'll recommend me to their friends. <laughs> yes, sir. Let me hear you weep, boy. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> uh, not quite that much, Oliver. For tears like that, they'd have to buy a more expensive coffin. <laughs> We cannot afford your best coffin, Mr. Sowerbury. I understand. <laughs> Poor mother. Poor dear mother. Mother? Oh. Why are you weeping, child? I share your grief, Mum. My mother, too, is dead, Mum. What a sensitive young lad. Can't we take a better coffin for Mother? We can't afford. Oh. 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 Mr. Salbury. We'll have your best coffin. <laughs> As you wish, sir. You're a very good crier, Oliver. There's no telling how far you can go in the funeral game if you uh, put your eyes to it. <laughs> what you crying about now, you bootlicker? I'm crying for all dear mothers, especially my own. You never knew your mother, you muttonhead. But I still love her. Oh, I love me mother, I do. <laughs> 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 Don't make fun of my mother. Oh, I love me nobody dead mother, I do. <laughs> <laughs> you can't laugh at my mother. <laughs> I'll get it out. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> he started it all. <laughs> Just because someone passed away? It could mean the sale of a fine coffin. Only the wealthy can afford to be so rude. I am Mr. Monks. The governor of the workhouse informs me that you board an apprentice known as Oliver Twist. Uh, yes, Mr. Monks, but... Uh... Take me to it. I said, take me to him. Oliver is a fine lad, but he does like his uh, privacy. He's gone. You let him escape. He picks up his coins on the way out. No one can cry as well as Oliver. You don't, mate. You little thief! I'm calling the police. I'm not the thief. It's him, sir. 
sir, I'm no thief. Your hand's in my pocket. I was only looking for my friend. But you have your hand in my pocket, you thief. Oh, well, like he says, sir, I was looking for his friend. His friend? In my pocket? He's a toad, sir. There you go, sir. His friend's a, a toad. Uh, if you two think you can hoodwink me without landing... <laughs> He's not used to bananas, I'm afraid. Sir, I've a good mind to notify my barrister and sue you for defamation of character. <laughs> you saved me from the gallows, mate. I'm Jack Dawkins, but folks call me the Artful Dodger. I'm Oliver Twist, and folks call me Oliver Twist. Oliver, me boy, that toad dodge is a better dodge than I ever come up with. Oh, it's not a dodge. Squeaker was just trying to find us some food. We haven't, uh, eaten in many days. Now, if it's grub you need, Oliver, what would you say to an apple? Or, or some honey cake? Or imported cheese, me lad? Or is it mutton that you fancy? Oliver, how'd you like to come and stay with me and a kind old gentleman that I live with? Oh, Artful, I like that very much. I'm all alone in the world. Except for Squeak, of course. Ever been to London before? I'm afraid not. Come along, then, and let the Artful Dodger be your guide. I'm a man about town, a man about town am I. I know every nook and cranny, and every little crook and nanny. And who do ask for a penny? Oh, I know them all like the back of me hand. Oh, I'm a man about town, a man about town am I. Here's Westminster Abbey, and there's a the River Thames. <laughs> Just look at the palace guard. How oh, I know each and every one by name. It's fun to walk on London docks. Big Ben's quite a sight to see. The palace gates or the marketplace. It's all been home to me. You're a man about town, a man about town, that's true. And who knows, maybe someday soon, I'll be a man about town like you. Here we go, mate. Oliver Twist, meet Faye, that kindly old gentleman of which I spoke. Hello, Miss Yoro, my dear. Thank you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Oliver, this young man is Charlie Bates. <laughs> oh, that's me, all right. <laughs> Charlie agrees with whoever speaks last. Oh, quite right. <laughs> but Charlie knows that no matter who speaks last, it's just the word of Fagin that matters. Oh, I agree. Never trust Charlie. All right. And these two are named Nasty. <laughs> <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.
<laughs> you see, Oliver? That's why I've named each one of them nasty. For not only are they identical in looks, <laughs> they also possess identical nasty dispositions. Oh, how true! We are two lovable boys, we are. <laughs> Oh, I swear to it in court, I will. And this is me oldest pal, Gabby. Isn't that so, my dear? Isn't that so, my dear? Ah! Why, he has your voice, sir. That lad is right. Be quiet, Charlie. Be quiet, Charlie. You too, my dear. <laughs> Monster, my sweet little pussycat. <laughs> and these are Gabby's gang. <laughs> now then, Oliver, what's that beating there, my dear? Do you wear your heart down by your belly button? No, sir. That's Squeaker. It's his toad. A great little dodge. Oh, how true! <laughs> Charlie, how can you say that? You don't even know what I'm talking about. Oh, that's true, too. He doesn't eat much, so... <laughs> back! 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 Oliver, it would be wise to keep your eye on Squeaker. Some of Gabby's gang is very fond of Toad. right <laughs> And Monster likes to eat birds. In short, everybody is afraid of somebody. <laughs> all right! That's how Fagin keeps us all on our toes. Afraid? <laughs> right -o. Isn't that rather cruel, sir? Right, Daddy! Shut up, Charlie. No more talking. Oh, I agree. Then agree. In silence! <laughs> As you wish! Oliver, I understand you've had a long walk. Now you shall have a long sleep. Come. Drink this, Oliver. And you will sleep well. What is it, sir? Just some hot gin and water, my dear. All me boys drink it. Fagin likes us to sleep well, so we won't learn where he hides his money. Oh, how true! Drink it. You'll like it. Sleep, all of you! Sir. Oh? So, you see, I was dreaming, sir. But where would a poor old gentleman such as you come to jewels and money, sir, if not one's dreams? Oh, that's quite right, my dear. Sleep well, but dream no more. Yes, sir. Sleep.
Zo, lieve. Well, not yet, my dear. Before you eat, you must observe the game. The game? The game? The game? The game. The game. Game, sir? Exactly. And mind you pay close attention, so you can learn to play it too. Behold! A snuff box, a note case, a watch, a stick pin, a ring, and me. <laughs> a gentleman. <laughs> to the streets to play the game! Off to the street! Did you pay close attention to how the game is played, my dear? Yes, sir. But it seemed like they were trying to steal your belongings, sir. <laughs> steal? No, no, Oliver. That wasn't stealing. It's only stealing when you get caught. Otherwise, it's just a game, my dear. Just a game, my dear? Come here. I'll show you how the game is played with strangers. See? There are my dear boys now. There are my dear birds now. Boys! Boys! Ah, <laughs> see how Artful has spotted that man who's bending over to tie his shoe? You see how cleverly Artful bumps into him? In goes his hand and out of the man's pocket. But Artful has the man's handkerchief, sir. Has he, my dear? Look again. The Dodger has passed the article to Charlie. Was that Charlie who ran by so quickly? Of course. Hot gin and water lends a boy strength and speed, my dear. <laughs> strength and speed, my dear. Observe that stat lady standing with her fancy hat. See Gabby's vulture swoop down on her. <laughs> oh, yeah. ah! Why, he's taken her hat in his beak, sir. It's amazing what a bird can learn, isn't it, my dear? <laughs> isn't it, my dear? Ah, there, there go nasties. You see how they poke the fruit vendor to the ground and borrow some oranges from his cart? But now the vendor's chasing them. Uh, see, see, see how me faithful pussycat runs between the vendor's legs and sees him sprawling! <laughs> Sir, are you sure that isn't stealing? No, no, no. It, it's just a game, my dear. It's a game. It's just a game. You'll find it quite a thrill on any day. And what's best of all, anyone can play after all. It's just a game. Pilfer, a builder, for shingles and wood. Try to sneak a rare antique. You know, they're always good. Grab a slab of meat, or seize a pound of cheese. Aspire to acquire any one of these. A necklace, a bracelet, a wallet, a ring. A top hat, suspenders, oh, almost anything! Oh, to pick a pocket, snatch a locket, grab a watch. It's really quite exciting, providing you're not caught. Cos it's a game. 
It's just a game. You'll find it quite a thrill on any day. And what's best of all, anyone can play. After all, <laughs> it's just a game. After all, <laughs> it's just a game. A marvellous haul. Good work. It's wine and mutton for lunch today, my dears. <laughs> <laughs> Oliver, you must pattern yourself after those fine lads, and you'll soon be earning your keep here. Here, come, come. See if you can remove me handkerchief without alerting me. <laughs> I'm afraid I was rather clumsy, sir. You mean it's gone? <laughs> I never felt a thing. You have a nice light touch, my dear. All you want is a bit more practice. Bit more practice. Meanwhile, Oliver, I want you to start removing the initials from all these articles and give them a, a bit of polish. Why is that, sir? Because I say so. <laughs> I believe someone's knocking at them. <laughs> ah, it's dear Nancy. Sweet faced one. <laughs> Nancy, this fine lad is Oliver Twist, who's come to live with us. Mob Deal looked as innocent as that <laughs> a thousand years ago. Where is that surly bloke of mine? Uh, uh, uh Bill is, uh, uh, is on an errand. <laughs> well, when he returns, you tell Bill Sykes for me that we need some food in our larder. <laughs> You see, Oliver, that's what we call stealing. Because you were caught. What a bright young lad. A bright young lad. Oliver, you stay here and observe me and Charlie demonstrate the proper way to separate a gentleman from his excess baggage in his pockets. Wait for me! Beg pardon, sir. Stop thief! Stop thief! Stop thief! Stop thief! Stop thief! Stop! Stop thief! Stop thief! Stop thief! Stop boy! Stop thief! Don't let him get away! Stop after him! Stop that thief! Stop that boy there! You clumsy oaf! You've injured my hat! I'm sorry, sir. Who do you think you are? I'm Oliver Twist, sir. Stop thief! Stop, boy! Stop thief! Stop thief! Stop thief! Stop! 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 I'd 
recognise his heavy foot anywhere. Bill, darling. Business first. At least Bullseye's glad to see me. What sort of trinkets have you um, uh, accumulated? Whatever they are, they're worth more than you're going to pay me, you two-faced, double-dealing, scheming, cheating old miser. Coo, Bill! How can you accuse your dearest friend of cheating? You had guards hidden in your sleeves. How dare... Whoops! You can't trust anybody these days. <laughs> Nothing but cheap cloth. Cheap cloth? That's pure silk. I stole it from my mother. Where would your mother get pure silk? She's a beggar, Bill. She stole it from a close friend. <laughs> Calm down, Bill. Uh, I'll, I'll pay your fair price. <laughs> you know I'm a friend. You know I'm a fiend. Friend. A friend? Fighting, 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 fighting! How dare you run in here without giving a signal? This is important, it can't wait. Oh, he's right, he's right. A rule is a rule. Absolutely. Oliver's been pinched. Correct. No. Oh, no, no, he hasn't at all. Yeah, he has. Yeah, yes, he is here. Who's Oliver? He's the new boy. A dear little face he has, Bill. Remember when... Business first. Nancy, this is no time to sleep. Go at once to the magistrate's office and learn what's happened to Oliver. There's no time to lose. I'm not a thief. I'm not a thief. <laughs> A thief! That's what they all say! Now then, you scoundrel! Will you confess you stole the, the, the... What exactly did you steal? It is I who have been robbed! Why didn't you say so in the first place? Is this how you treat a citizen? You dare raise your voice to a magistrate? the highest regard for citizens, Mr. Lowbrow. Brownlow! Don't correct a magistrate! I wish to speak concerning the young lad who has been mistreated by an angry mob, sir. I myself am guilty of prejudging the... Aha! You admit you're guilty, eh? When were you in jail last, you thief? I have never been in jail. I am guilty of assuming the boy stole my handkerchief. The boy maintains he's innocent, but... Quiet, Mr. Blue Nose! Drown low! Silence! You see, it's all in the point of view. The judiciary process is quite complicated, true. But one must remember 
It's all in the point of view. And I say guilty. He's guilty. It's very plain to see. Just look at those beady eyes, those shabby clothes, some disguise. It comes as no surprise. He's guilty. Guilty. He's guilty. You can always tell. Even without evidence, they'll try to plead their innocence. I just use my common sense. He's guilty. Guilty. He's guilty. Guilty, guilty, guilty. There's nothing left to decide. After all, I'm always right. So I order with delight. He's guilty. Guilty. Who are you? Oh, I'm a book vendor, sir. Uh, well, that gentleman holds a book I was going to sell him. Forgive me, sir. In the confusion, I retained the book for which I have not paid you. I knew you were a thief, Greenlow. Oh, no, sir. I'm sure this fine gentleman speaks the truth. I'm here about the robbery. <gasps> There's been a robbery? Lock all the doors! <laughs> Sir, that boy who lies unconscious there did not steal this gentleman's handkerchief. It was stolen by two other boys, and I saw it all. Why have you waited so long to clarify this outrage? I would arrive sooner, but there was no one to mind me stall. All decent citizens had joined a mob. Well, sir, shall justice be served? find him. He's a bad one or I'll eat my head. No, Grimwick. That boy has been victimized by circumstances. I intend to teach him to read and write and grow into a fine citizen. He'll steal from you one day, Brownlow. I doubt that, Grimwick. Mrs. Bedwin, please nurse the little waif back to health. this first book. May I please read another? Of course, Oliver. Read on, lad. Reading is the road to knowledge. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. He'll disappoint you yet, Brownlow, or I'll eat my head. Get you anything, Bill, dear? Oh, where can he be? Where can Oliver be? He's just another orphan. Forget him. But, Bill, I haven't slept in months. 
Look at me poor eyes. If Oliver informs the police about our doings, it's the gallows. All right, find the little informer. I said find him. <laughs> I've read these. May I read more? By all means. Oh, Oliver. Bring me that bottom book you hold. This one, sir? Oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. Oliver, this is the very book I was reading the day we met. Oh, in the confusion, I've neglected to pay the vendor for it. The man who saved me from jail, sir? Oh, sir, may I pay him for you? So I can thank him personally? Yes, of course. Mrs. Bedwin will give you directions. Oh, here is a five-pound note, Oliver. Thank you for trusting me, sir. Why hasn't he told us where to find this Fagin creature, eh? He tried. The boy never left Fagin's attic but once. It's quite natural that he's uncertain where the evil man resides. Brownlow, you're a soft-hearted old fool. It's one in the afternoon. How long do you propose we wait here before you admit you're wrong about that young rascal? He'll return by three o'clock. If he does, I'll eat my head. <laughs> on that Oliver Twist. When I get my hands on that Oliver Twist, I'll be a bandit. Still searching for Oliver Twist, Mr. Fagin? Oh, what interest is that to you, sir? My name is Monks. It is important that I learn the whereabouts of the boy at once. You wish to do young Oliver the arm, sir? Certainly not. I'm merely interested in locating a certain locket that may be in Oliver Twist's possession. Therefore, it is essential that he be found. Hmm. Sounds expensive to me. Find him, and you'll also find an open purse, sir. Nothing will stop me from finding Oliver Twist now. Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> Oliver Twist. Ow, ooh. Help me. Help me, please. Don't get involved, dear. Help me. Help. Probably just a bad boy who needs punishment. It's me son, sir. He's been misbehaving and, uh... Ah! I'm not his son! I'm Oliver Twist! Uh, Mr. Monks, you mentioned something about an open purse, I believe? I cannot be sure he's Oliver Twist until I find a certain locket. 
Yeah, no locket. What shall we do with him? I'll let you know shortly. What's this about a locket? Don't worry, Bill. You'll get your share. I'd better, or... <laughs> He's stolen your money. He's probably on his way this very moment. A five pound note. Thank you. You're welcome. That belongs to Mr. Brownlow. I must return it, or he'll think I stole it. Oliver, you see how you've forgotten your lessons? It's not stealing unless you get caught. Right, right. It is stealing. Right. Wrong. Wrong, wrong. Give me that fiver, Bill. The fiver's mine. You keep the clothes. <laughs> Oliver, don't cry. They won't hurt you anymore. Will you, Bill? I won't hurt him. I'll kill him if he doesn't tell me where he's hid that locket. <laughs> Perhaps he's met with foul play. You suffer from too much faith, old friend. Better too much faith than none at all. Oh, Oliver, where are you? I wouldn't tell you thieves, even if I knew. And then stay until you tell the truth, my dear. Fagan is your best friend, and not fancy gentlemen who force boys to read books. Filled with nothing but words. It's been three weeks. Forget the boy. I can't. Mr. Brownlow, two people have arrived who've read your notice. Send them in at once. You have information about Oliver Twist? Well, uh, uh... shut up, Bumble. Your notice referred to £25 reward, sir. Yes, yes, the money's yours if you can tell me anything true about the lad. True, yes. We're not the sort who... Shut up, Bumble! Madam, tell us what you know and do it quickly, please. We treated the little orphan like a son. We gave him love and food and clothes and no chores to do. Then we apprenticed him to a kind and generous businessman. But Oliver shirked his work and beat up the man's poor wife and dog then ran off with her savings. And may we have the 25 pounds, please? I never met a shrew who spoke the truth. Here's a pound note to take you back from where you came. You've told us nothing but lies about Oliver Twist. The both fools, or I'll eat my head. <laughs> He's all yours, Bill. <laughs> Show me the room where Oliver Twist was born. Born? Uh, yeah, well... Who ruins our sleep? On that iron bed she died, poor thing. What was her name? She gave no name. What did she say to you? I can't recall, sir. 
Oh! Uh, my memory is returning. She said one day the child would know who he was. How would he know? There was a piece of worthless jewellery. Ah, a locket. It's worthless, sir. I wear it now and then. Give it to me. At last! Sir, if that locket is worth so much to you, it should my husband and I not benefit? By all means, madam. <laughs> it doesn't pay to be nice to people. Shut up, Bumble! <laughs> Why are you taking the boy, Bill? Oh, where could he be off to this time of night? You've forgotten something? Yes. <laughs> Mr. Sykes, sir? I'm very cold. Well, then, how would you like to be inside a nice, warm house? Oh, I'd like that very much, sir. Very well, Oliver. Come along, then. Up you go. On to me shoulders, lad. Your shoulders, sir? So you can slip through that narrow window, then tiptoe to the front door and open it ever so quietly. And before you know it, we'll both be inside as warm as you please. But is it proper to enter through a window, sir? It is if you plan to burglarize the place, Oliver, me boy. <laughs> but... Do as I say or your brains will be hanging out your ears, boy. Yes, sir. Blast you! Faith in the house! Faith in the house! You stupid little blimey! You've caused your own death, fool! In the boy. Go home, Nancy. Go <coughs> home, Nancy. Bill, what is it? Where's Oliver? Where he belongs, lying dead in a ditch. No! Women, they're impossible to please. He's dead then? Fouled me night's work to the bargain, he did. I knew all that book reading would be his ruin. <laughs> Oliver Twist is who I feared he was. The boy must die. Is it uh, worth a hundred pounds to have him done in, sir? 
That it is. Then pay me, sir, for I've anticipated your needs. Oliver no longer lives. You're heartless, the lot of you. You're poor Oliver's toad, aren't you? What is it, Squeaker? Oh, wait, wait! Poor little orphan boy. Not even ten years old. Oliver! You're alive! To good fellowship, a night well spent. To many. To long life. To money. <laughs> Mr. Fagin, you shall receive your hundred pounds directly when I am satisfied that Oliver Twist is as dead as you say he is. Sir, are you implying that Bill Sykes is a liar? Or that Fagin is a liar? Yes, gentlemen, that is exactly what I am implying. Oh. But I left him right here. Then... Where is he? Gentlemen, I suggest we remain very calm <coughs> and attempt to puzzle out this little mystery. Yes, that is most wise. By all means, let's not lose our heads. Our brains will show us the proper way. And this is it. When you came into my life, you opened up my eyes to a love I'd never known before. It's you who taught me how to live, who showed me how to give a love I'd never shown before. But now, if you should leave my life, my world would surely end. I'd never smile again. Oh, love, if you should leave my life, no words could quite explain the never-ending pain. If no, I can't go on. All hope for me is gone If you should leave my life If you should leave my Where shall I get money for a doctor? Miss, Mr. Brownlow. Mr. Brownlow? Mr. Brownlow? Who is he, Oliver? I is he a friend? Where does he live? One hundred pounds they've robbed me of! Thieves! This world is full of thieves! 
Fagin, I must have two pounds at once. Two pounds? It's for the doctor. Anyone who needs two pounds for the doctor is halfway to his grave already. Why waste the money? Oh, it's Bill. He's, uh, he's sick. Sick? Bill who? Fagin, I must have that money or else... Of course you shall have your two pounds, my dear. That's exactly all that stands between me and the poor house. <laughs> Sleep! Sleep! Oh, bless you. Follow her. What, what? Fagin, you miser! Can't a man sleep? <laughs> you seem quite well for one so ill, dear Bill. <laughs> Who's ill? Dear Nancy just borrowed two pounds from me to pay a doctor to tend to your illness. Why would Nancy? Why indeed, dear Bill. If she sold me out, if she has sold me out, I'll... <laughs> and then I'll... Uh... Where is she? Oh, the bird doesn't know, Bill! Ah, it, the bird doesn't know, Bill! Have you learned the whereabouts of Oliver? Fagina, the door is open. Fagina, I couldn't knock in code fashion because the door is open. Oh, what's the use of learning code if folks leave doors open? Here, I'll follow Nancy and come back to find... What of Nancy? She's back at your apartment. And, and what of Oliver? She has him on the third leaky boat along the Thames off London Bridge. At last. One slice worth a hundred pounds. When I get my hands on her, I'll... Mr. Brownlow. Mr. Brownlow. Squeaker. I'm alive. How do... Do you think that's Mr. Sykes? Oliver! Mr. Brownlow! You're safe now, lad. Shh! who you are and why you wish to harm this boy. That is none of your affair, sir. You will do as Mr. Brownlow suggested or I shall hold your head beneath the Thames for 20 minutes, sir. Oliver, let me know when 20 minutes have expired. 20 minutes underwater? I shall be dead inside of two. I like to leave no room for a doubt, sir. Brownlow, hold the scoundrel steady while I bash him a time or two. Wait, I'll tell all. 
I was the only child of wealthy parents. Theirs was a marriage not of love. My father divorced my mother, who unbelongs to my father, had the divorce set aside. And when my father met another woman and fell in love, they were married. And when she was with child, they learned about my mother's deviousness. But meanwhile, my father's wife, that is the second wife, who legally was not but thought she was, ran off in shame. And Mrs. Bumble stole her locket. Enough! You are giving me a headache, sir! <laughs> What you are trying to avoid confessing is that you wish Oliver dead in order to do him out of his rightful inheritance. It would appear so, sir. You said you would not strike me. No, I said I would not drown you. Oliver, you are a wealthy lad. And I have misjudged you. Oliver, how would you like to see Mr. Grimwig eat his head? <laughs> right now. All I wish is to see Nancy safe, for I fear for her life. If that man hurts that girl, I'll... I'll, I'll... Oh, uh, hello, Bill, my love. Oh, oh, I made this bundle of my clothes to sell to Fagin, so you'll have a few bob for one. We want our share. We've earned it. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's against the law for miners to possess wealth. Wrong. Absolutely wrong. Charlie, you disagreed with me. Go to the closet. <laughs> Yo! <laughs> Get that back. You fool. Right out. Oh, you your wristwatch. <laughs> Drop it! Drop it, I say! Drop it! What's your name, you? Me? My name? Why, my name is Chauncey Cavendish, the third. Oh, beg pardon, sir. I thought you was, uh... Bring it! Bring it! Bring it! Well, uh, good day, gentlemen. Uh, I'm, I'm late for me club. Bring it! Bring it! Hey, Gag, we must brush up on our French. How come? Because Paris is our new address. <laughs> from me bullseye. Everyone knows you belong to me. <laughs> Poor Nancy. She was my friend. Mr. Sykes's dog! Follow that dog!
somebody speaking? I'm too old to hear. Magistrate Fang is speaking! Uh, where are you, madam? Eh? Hmm. I was going to sentence you to the gallows, but because you're so old and feeble, I hereby sentence you to life. I, I have no wife. Who's speaking to me? To life! Take him away! Oh. Thank you, sir. Ah, stupid jackass! Ah. What? You call a magistrate a jackass? I sentence you to the gallows! Oh, I said nothing, sir. I, I swear it. Silence! Or I'll hang you twice! <laughs> It was very kind of you to... Shut up, Bumble. No! You shut up! It's a wonderful world after all When you got a friend to lean on Someone you're very keen on To pick you up when you fall It's a wonderful world after all When you got a friend beside you Someone to help and guide you Someone who's there when you call There are people all around you To surround you To help and guide you Someone who's there when you call There are people all around you To surround you with love They'll stand beside you without question Cause that's what friends are made of It's a wonderful world after all Open your eyes and you'll see So much love and beauty Cause it's a wonderful world A wonderful world